Hollywood loves to glamorize life in the mob. From Mario Puzo's romantic work The Godfather, to Goodfellas covering the rise and fall of Henry Hill. It's easy to get caught up in the stories about men who drive nice cars, control vast empires, walk around with wads of cash, and of course, have beautiful women hanging off their arms and at their beck and call. When one thinks of the glory days of the mob, they usually think of men like Charles Lucky Luciano, Frank Costello, Meyer Lansky, Joey Adonis, Al Capone, and Joe Bonanno. Sure, they had their bad points. After all, they were criminals who settled business disputes with guns and knives. But they had their good points too. One thing you have to admire about the old guard of the mob, they inspired loyalty. And the loyalty they cultivated in their underlings wasn't just based on fear, but a brotherhood which stretched back for generations. But this wasn't the case with the recently departed former Philadelphia mob boss, Nicodemo Little Nicky Scarfo. Just ask a few of the old timers who still walk the streets of the city of brotherly love. As they see it, there was nothing romantic or glamorous about the Philly mob during the Scarfo years. David Fritchie, the former head of the Organized Crime Strike Force in the U.S. Attorney's Office in Philadelphia, called Scarfo bloodthirsty and said his penchant for violence not only was detrimental to the city, it also contributed toward factionalism and distrust within his own organization. The city wasn't a better place for him having been here. After the murder of Angelo Bruno, the man known as the Docile Don, who held power in Philadelphia for 20 years, his second-in-command, Philip Chicken Man Testa, took over as boss. But his time at the top of the Philly mob was short-lived. Like Bruno before him, Testa fell before conspirators when a bomb exploded under the front porch of his home. With the backing of Vincent the Chin Gigante, head of one of New York's five families, Nicky Scarfo took over the Philly mob. Many would describe his time not as a rule, but as a reign of terror and treachery. Scarfo nephew Philip Leonetti explained, when his uncle took over as boss, things began to change. He always told me, he says, you gotta kill people and you gotta keep on killing them. That's how this thing works. That's how he looked at a problem. There was no more brotherhood. I mean, my uncle took over, and the way he was acting, it wasn't the same. It was, he was, breaking all the rules that he taught me to obey, and I just, I was disgusted. I couldn't take it anymore. During Bruno's 20-year reign, murder was a last resort. Like Lucky Luciano or Johnny Torrio, Bruno preferred to negotiate. Blood was viewed as being too costly, but not for Scarfo. During his time as the head of the Philly Borgata, murder became the sine qua non, his calling card, if you will. Citing again George Anastasia, Scarfo's penchant for violence and hair-triggered temper were legendary both in the underworld and in law enforcement circles, and they ultimately led to his downfall and the destruction of his organization. Nicholas Nick the Crow Caramondi, a former soldier in the Philly mob and a go-to hitman, who later turned government witness explained, Scarfo could turn on you in a second, and once he did, forget about it. It was all over for you. You might as well go to China. Per a 1987 report conducted by the Pennsylvania Crime Commission, Scarfo's exercise of naked brutal power destroyed whatever loyalty he may have fostered in his subordinates and caused some to look to law enforcement for protection. Insiders and informants stated that any slight Nicky Scarfo perceived, real or imaginary, would land you on his to-do list. It made little difference if you were a member of his crime family and a loyal soldier who carried out his every order to a T. Scarfo's treachery reached its pinnacle when he ordered the murder of Salvatore Salvi Testa. Salvi was one of Scarfo's capos and the son of his friend Philip Chicken Man Testa. Scarfo had even promised his father that he would always protect the younger Testa. But all that changed in 1984. Scarfo ordered Testa killed, mob informants later told authorities, 
because he had offended mob underball Salvatore Chucky Merlino by breaking off his engagement to Merlino's daughter, Maria, just two months before they were to be married. But others within law enforcement and the mob believe Scarfo's real motive was fear that the young and charismatic Testa would eventually become a rival for power within the organization. Whichever is true to the guys on the street, this appeared to be the straw which broke the camel's back. Most viewed Salvi Testa as a good kid and a loyal soldier. If Scarfo would have him whacked for no good reason, what chance did they have? Even his nephew, Philip Leonetti, began doubting if his blood relation would protect him from his uncle's unstable and volatile temper. Scarfo's brutality proved to be his undoing. Fearing for their lives, associates made members of his family, including his own nephew, lined up to testify against him. And as if this wasn't enough, Scarfo's three sons got caught up in the wake of their father's destructive path. His youngest son, Mark, a normal kid who didn't want any part of the mob life, was continually hounded and pressured by his father to the point that at the age of 17 he hung himself. He remained in a coma for 25 years, never regaining consciousness, passing away just a few years ago. His son Chris, who was so ashamed of the stigma associated with the Scarfo name, took his mother's maiden name, disavowing his father. And his namesake, Nicodemo Scarfo Jr., who followed his father into the mob life, now sits in prison for an array of crimes, including fraud, extortion, and embezzlement. He is scheduled for release in 2037, at which time he will be 73 years old. His nephew and former underboss turned government witness, Philip Leonetti, noted, My uncle was an evil guy. He's no freaking good. You don't know how evil he is. He destroyed his whole family. The rise and fall of little Nicky Scarfo took on the elements of a tragic Italian opera as it was played out in front page headlines and on television and radio news reports, one writer noted. Folks in Philadelphia, both saints and sinners, will do their best to forget the reign of Nicodemo Little Nicky Scarfo, who died at the age of 87 on January 13, 2017, while serving a 55-year prison sentence for racketeering and murder. Little Nicky Scarfo did not inspire loyalty. His funeral testifies to that fact. There is no procession of cars filled with flowers. No wise guys kissing each other on the cheek paying their last respects to their Don. No associates or wannabes trying to make a good impression. It appeared that nobody cared. There was no glamour, no romance. When his nephew Philip Leonetti was informed that his uncle had died on Friday the 13th, he quipped, That's appropriate.